Avaya has changed my life. Avaya has made me the woman I am today. Avaya is my home. Avaya is personal freedom. Avaya is the reason my life continuously improves. Let everyone in your life know about Avaya. Everyone needs to know about this amazing company. Thank you, Avaya, for appearing in my inbox. What Ike Allen and Andy Anderson have created at Avaya is what the world needs. Hello, Avaya family. I'm Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for joining us. Our fellow teacher, Rebecca Zung, is back with us today to talk about how to slay any negotiation with narcissists. Rebecca is a narcissism negotiation expert and one of the top 1% of attorneys in the nation. She's also a best-selling author and her perspective Perspectives are in high demand by television and print outlets and many, many other things. Welcome back to Avaya, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so good to have you back. And and uh, I'm excited for another great conversation around a really important topic. So let's let's dive in this to this. So so how did you you personally come to focus on narcissists and specifically negotiating with them? I'm intrigued. Yeah, well, I mean, I had been talking about negotiation for many years. I really came up through the ranks as an attorney, as you mentioned, and I did high net worth divorce for a long time, which obviously a narcissist or two slipped in there, as you can imagine. Uh, So I really had been dealing with negotiating and specifically high net worth, toxic personalities, difficult personalities for a long time. And when I was developing my practice, I, I really wanted to have something to speak on to go out to develop my practice. And nobody really wanted to hear a talk on divorce. So I really had developed a talk on negotiating years ago, probably 17 years ago, maybe, because I've been practicing about 21 years now. So I developed this talk and I've done it all over. And I was the keynote speaker, even for the American Bar Association. I wrote the book, Negotiate Like You Matter two years ago. Robert Shapiro wrote the foreword. So really I had started to think about developing digital courses on negotiating and developing a YouTube channel on negotiating. I had been looking at ways to not have to practice loss, you know, trade time for money and all of that. So that was really going to be shift how, where I was going to be shifting my focus. It was about two, not even quite two years ago that I started to realize that I was dealing with a person in my life on a very small business endeavor that I wasn't, did, did never meet, made any money. It was a very short lived business endeavor. Thank God. But it was short enough uh, or long enough rather that I realized um, through a friend who was also a psychologist that this person in my life was actually a covert narcissist. I'd never heard that term before. I never even knew what that was. But it sent me on this journey, this path of learning everything I could about narcissism. And then through that path, I also came to realize that a family member in my husband and my life was also a covert narcissist. And I just started learning everything and started to realize, wait a minute, I think I can actually apply everything that I'm learning about narcissism to this many, many years that I've devoted to really honing my skills on negotiation, which is what I did. And at the time I was really still practicing law. So I started applying it to these highly uh, contentious divorce cases, high net worth divorce cases. And I started to see movement. I actually started to go, okay, I'm onto something here. This actually works. What I'm learning actually is working. And I realized I'm the only attorney who's really diving into this. So 
I just, I had already started a YouTube channel and I had already done a few things uh, on YouTube and I did, so I thought, okay, let me do a video on how to negotiate with a narcissist. So I did that and just one video, like boom, all of a sudden got a spike in views. And this was about a year and a half ago. It wasn't even all that long ago. And all of a sudden, everything's kind of exploded for me. And that's kind of where I started to focus on, on this specifically. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And, and it, again, I'm, like I said, in the beginning, I'm intrigued because it's so, it's such an interesting path for, I think anyone, right. To like come, come to this like realization and then applying it in, in your practice and, and, and your own personal experience of the covert narcissist, which I think is important because, um, a lot of people, right, might think of it as the more, more over narcissist, which is more uh, boisterous and obvious as to what, right, what's going on. Can you share a little bit about like what your experience of a covert narcissist and like how that shows up differently? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I remember when this person who happens to be a psychologist mentioned, you know, to my husband and me that there were two people in our lives at that time. One was a family member and one was this other person that these two people both, ha both happen to be women, by the way, which a lot of people think of narcissists as men, but both of the people in our lives were women and both happened to be people that most people would think of as very, very nice, wonderful people to the rest of the world seem really great, super kind, wonderful people. And I remember when he said, this is a guy who super smart doctorate in psychology, had been like a scientist in another life, decided to switch gears, become a, a, a psychologist, very, very smart guy. And he said, oh, they're, they're narcissists, they're covert cluster B, he gave like this whole diagnosis. And, and I was like, oh, I, I don't think they're narcissists. I mean, to me, a narcissist was exactly what you're describing, like this loud boy stress, fill the room. I'm the greatest. Everybody, you know, I, I, I'm wonderful. Everybody should serve me. La male, generally kind of like that CEO type, you know, whole court in the, in, in whatever room they, they walk into that to me was a narcissist. I don't know in my mind, that's what it was. And so like these two women that he said, oh, they're narcissists. They're like covert narcissists. I thought, no, I, I think they're really insecure, but I don't, I don't think they're narcissists. Uh, and, you know, he kind of went and, and sort of gave a description and he said, well, you know, this can be our hypothesis. And if I'm wrong, we'll know it. And if I'm right, we'll also know it. And he said, so we'll see, you know, and um, he said, so here's what the, uh, the things are to look for. And, um, you know, he, he didn't say, oh, for sure, but these are the things you should look for. And of course he was a hundred percent right. And he gave us some books to read and things like that. And I mean, one of the books I was like on the plane reading going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, like out loud, you know, it's like crazy. So, but basically, you know, these are people who are much better at masking it. In a lot of ways, I think that they're uh, more dangerous because they're stealthier. They're very good at hiding it to the rest of the world. They're much more passive aggressive in how they, they, um, handle themselves, they gaslight, they use, they're, they're much more under the radar. They, they line up people against other people. They, they, um, they, they just use different methodology so that they have this sort of plausible deniability to the outside world about what's actually going on. And, and it's, and, and the things that they do and say to their, uh, targets are much uh stealthier it's like kind of this death by a thousand cuts mm -hmm. you know, these little teeny things that they do i mean one of the examples that was given for example in one of the books that i read was this wife whose husband 
seems wonderful to the rest of the world. He would stop by Starbucks. He would go in, he would go ask her if she wanted anything. Uh, he would go in, she would say, yes, uh, get me a, you know, matcha latte or whatever. He would go in, get his, his coffee. He'd come back and get in the car. He would be starting to drive away. She'd be like, where's my matcha latte? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. And he would do that over and over again. And, and it's like that kind of like passive aggressive thing over and over again, that little devalue, that little cut. And it's like, is that the kind of thing you're going to leave your spouse over? But it's that, you know, when you go to tell people that sort of thing, it's like, well, it, it, I'm sure it was inadvertent. They're so nice. Um, you know, and, and that's the kind of thing that you see with covert narcissists a lot of times, and it starts to get worse and worse and worse. Um, they're really, really good at kind of, um, disguising, like, you know, putting, um, you know, like a care statement with a devalue statement, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm just so concerned for you. Um, you know, your, you know, with your eating habits and, you know, it, it's like this, uh, you know, your weight or something, but I'm just, it's really a concern, um, you know, it, and it, it's like this cut kind of a thing, but that's, that's more of a covert narcissist. And it's, it's really much worse in so many ways because it's, it's, it's this, you the slow burn into hell yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah great examples too because i was you I kind of made me laugh there and, and one of them of reminding me of a personal example in a, a relationship in my life but yeah it's very um demeaning and 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 to the point of de it's deceptive because you know might not notice it or maybe it's been going on for years and then you might start to recognize oh well okay this is something different than what i thought it was and um yeah so i'm thank you for going through like just ideas of like the covert um narcissist so let, let's also get back to negotiation since i'm i'm also curious about that so in in your expertise in this world right what is it that really makes the narcissist tick right if we're talking negotiations here like what what's driving them oh yeah and and that's so easy i mean that's that's the one thing they're heinous to deal with absolutely heinous but they're so easy to figure out because it's just one thing and one thing only. And they're like rats in a maze. It's, it's narcissistic supply and that's it. I mean, we as normal, regular people were motivated by lots of different things, but narcissists are motivated, motivated only by narcissistic supply. Now, that being said, when you go to negotiate with them, you do have to understand there is a hierarchy of narcissistic supply. And that is the one thing that I have figured out and how I teach in my SLAY methodology, which stands for strategy, leverage, anticipating, and focusing on you, your case, and your position. Um, so when you're building your strategy, when you're building your leverage, you have to understand that when you're looking at narcissistic supply, there is a hierarchy of supply. So there's what I call the diamond level or, or the grade A level of supply, which for a narcissist is always going to be wrapped up in the optics, how they look. Um, so they will protect, defend that, you know, that no matter what, no matter what, you know, that's going to be, um, you know, their, their lifeblood, their oxygen. And so anything that has to do with, um, how they look is going to be top shelf, grade a diamond level supply, what I call the coal level supply, which it burns, it gives them energy. It's also really, really important. They want both. They'll go for both. They're kind of like vultures picking the meat out of the carcass. They'll definitely take it all if they can. Um, but the coal level supply is what I call the dark underbelly of supply, which is making you squirm, controlling you, devaluing you. Um, and so 
the, 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 the problem that most people have is they go into a negotiation with a narcissist thinking, well, they just want to win. So they, they think of it only in terms of the grade A level of supply. They think, well, I know they just want to win. So what is it that they want? I'll just give it to them. They forget about grade B, the coal level supply. They also very much enjoy making you squirm, intimidating you, uh, watching you, you know, uh, uh, be, um, uh, you know, annoyed. It's sort of like that 10 year old kid who's got like the pin with the earthworm and seeing it like move around when it like pricks it. It act, they actually enjoy the process of, let me give you a proposed agreement. You spend three days figuring out whether or not you're actually gonna accept the terms. You talk to all your friends. You, I don't really wanna give in on all these things. Okay, I guess I'll, I don't really wanna do this, but I just want this over. So you go back and you say, yes. And then, oh, feels different now. Um, they're going to hold you to the stuff that they like, but all the other stuff, you know, is changed because you took too long or whatever goal, goal posts have now moved. And why is that? Because they enjoy making you squirm. They like intimidating you. They want to control the process. That's that coal level supply. And you're over there going, what the hell is going on? Why is this taking so long? Why are they, you know, and then they're going to blame you, by the way, they're going to blame you. And you, you cannot figure out why is this costing so much money and all of, all of this. And, and that is why. And so the key, the key is creating a strategy and leverage which um, uh, threatens a source of narcissistic supply that's going to be more important for them to protect and keep and retain than, that, than um, you know, it threatens to expose them in some way so that they will have to have no choice but to let go of that supply that controls you. And, and a perfect example, by the way, which I've been talking about, is this Britney Spears thing. You know, I mean, the dad, the only reason why he is finally relinquishing control and giving up this supply is because he's being exposed. Mm -hmm. The only reason. Gotcha. It's a perfect example. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that, that into the conversation in the world of uh, something that a lot of people know about um, that's happening right now. So, okay. So we've talked about, right. It, the, like what makes them tick is this narcissistic supply. So if you're in the process of negotiating or preparing for negotiations, what are some ways to so-called disarm the narcissist, right? What are some phrases that are going to help and work in communicating with them? Yeah. So um, I, one example that I use a lot is what I call narcissistic bartering. Um, and um, a lot of people don't necessarily love it, but you know, listen, hear me out here, people. Um, so you kind of fluff up their ego. You give something that they want in exchange for something that you want. And, you know, you, you don't always go around doing this. You, 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 it's always in exchange for something that you want. But, you know, if you want them to do something for you, you, you have to give them what they want, which is always going to be adulation, you know, something that they need. They desperately need something to feed their ego at all times. I mean, that's, that's what they crave. Um, you know, it's like, it's like a person who's drowning or something. They, they desperately need that oxygen, you know, that supply is their oxygen. It's their, it's their, 
it's their lifeblood, it's their food. And so if you want them to do something for you, so, you know, let's say you want them to, I don't know, uh, do QuickBooks or something, you know, can, can you, um, you know, manage the books for me. You're so much better at math than I am or something like that. You have to, you have to say things like that in order to motivate them to want to do it. Um, and you know, you're not going to go around doing this all the time and you have to be sparing at it. And you want to make sure you're not going to say something that's going to hurt you in a particular case, be careful, you know, everything is a potential trial exhibit. So, you know, obviously weigh what you're saying, things like that. Also be careful that you don't have any kind of sarcastic tone. You're so much better than I am, you know, because they hear tones, you know, I always joke that narcissists hear tones like dogs hear whistles, like even if there's no tone, they hear tone. So, you, you know, you can't be sarcastic about it. And you also can't like add in, well, I'm also good at it, but you're also good at it. You know, you can't, you can't add in anything about yourself because they don't want to hear that. So, you know, and, and if you have to go shower or vomit later or whatever, do that. But it's, it's something you use sparingly to get you, you, you know, it's a trade it's, it's to get them to do something that you want them to do. Right. Um, so that's one thing that you can do. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that, that example and, and what you can do afterwards if you need to. I love that. Um, so what about, let's, let's talk about divorce specifically, because I know that's been a big focus of yours over the years. So what, what have you seen, like what kind of tricks, let's say, do narcissists like to pull on people in like divorce cases, um, and such? Hmm. Um, so I like to break it down actually between the covert, the grandiose and the malignant. It's a little bit different for each actually, um, because the covert is going to be a little bit more stealth. Uh, they aren't going to be so overt in um, getting caught. So they're going to be more like lining up their flying monkeys. They're going to be a, a little stealthier. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're better at it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the overts, the grandiose, they're actually going to be more aggressive you know, they're going to be the ones filing the, the unnecessarily uh, unnecessary pleadings right away. They're going to be much more aggressive. They might, they're probably going to be ignoring court orders. They're probably going to not necessarily give you everything that they're supposed to in discovery. They're going to make you work for everything. They may even, you know, mess with text messages and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're basically going to do anything that they can get away with. They'll probably lie uh, even on the stand. And if they can get away with it, they will, uh, you know, and you're going to be finding yourself a lot of times saying, how are they getting away with this? How are they getting away with this? And, and one thing I want people to remember is that there's no like, fairies standing in people's living room, go ready to jump out going, Hey, you're not supposed to do that. You know? So when, when you say, how are they getting away with this? Who is going to stop them? The only person that has any power over people is the judge. That's it. No one else no lawyers, not even really police, unless they're breaking the law, you know, right in front of it, which means it would have to be a criminal matter. So, you know, like if they're saying things or doing things, you know, if, if you want to stop them, there's only, you know, you can jam everything through the court system or do what I'm telling you to do, which is create strategy and leverage, which potentially exposes them, you know, so that they feel squeezed and motivated to, you know, want to settle with you. 
Those are your options. So are these like things that you suggest people do to avoid like going to court and settling things in what, like a, like a mediation or a different way or like how, or is this like in conjunction with court? Well, potentially, potentially, I mean, you know, it depends on where they are on the continuum of the, you know, situation or, you know, not everybody who's negotiating has a court case going on either, you know, so I guess it just depends on what they're actually negotiating to. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you, you mentioned power just a second ago, right. As it relates to a judge, but what about like, you know, for the average ordinary person listening right now, who feels like whoever this person is, this narcissist is really feels like they're just so much more powerful for them, for, you know, than them. And they just can't seem to get any leverage. Like how, like what other things could they do or try out to, um, to write, take back their power, so to speak. Yeah. So here's the not so secret secret that the narcissist does not want you to know. You are actually way more powerful than they are. They are way more afraid of you than you are of them. They just don't want you to know that. They are so worried that you're going to figure that out. I always actually say the analogize it to the wizard of oz you know like it, remember at the end how like dorothy and and all the they all showed up at the end and there was like that huge like you know um i don't know hologram or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it of that big thing but it was actually this feeble old man behind the curtain that's that's really what's going on with the narcissist and if you pull back the curtain they're going to be like freaking out and they'll like totally collapse I mean, seriously, that's what's really going on. Uh, and, and once you can realize that and start to shift that dynamic and really feel your power inside, uh, they're going to be like actually scared of you. And, and it, they're, they're going to realize there's no more to supply to be had from you. And they'll just slither on down the road and go find it from someone else. And once you can conquer that narcissist, you will feel so much more powerful in every aspect of your life. Right. Seriously. It'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. Mm. Yeah. I love that. That's absolutely true. And, and, and so true that, right. A lot of us don't necessarily realize, oh, well, this person is exactly what you said, the feeble old man behind the curtain. And it is very true, right? It, it's like a massively, massively insecure person who is is very afraid of you and probably everybody else and hence their behavior and, you know, all their tricks and all that kind of stuff. So yes, that is, see, that's very empowering to get. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. So uh, true. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, your, how people can learn more about you. There's a couple of buttons below that link over to your site. We've got a, a free, free gift as well as a program, I believe. So could you share a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a free, um, I call it a crush my negotiation prep worksheet, but it's actually an ebook. It's 15 pages. Uh, I've actually had so many thousands of people download it and tell me that they've won their entire negotiations just on that. And it's totally free. And um, the link is below. So definitely make sure that you grab that because it is, you know, I wanted to make the freebie something that's actually like meaty and juicy and worth it. So make sure that you grab that. So, so that's the freebie. And then my course is, um, slay your negotiation with a narcissist. And, um, it is a, a four hour course. Uh, it is absolutely, um, I designed it. It's the only, uh, course that has been designed by a lawyer just for, exactly what we've been talking about, how to build your strategy, how to build your leverage, how to anticipate. I've put absolutely everything in there that you need. It has a huge workbook. It has 50 key phrases to disarm a narcissist in there. It has a, it actually has a five page, uh, um, little booklet for you to just hand to your uh, attorney, like, here you go, make my attorney my ally so that you can actually help have your attorney help you, like explain to them what it is that you're dealing with. It has 
so much stuff in there. I mean, all kinds of giveaways in there. So it is totally worth it. And it's like less than the price of one hour of an attorney's time. So it's like definitely worth it. Mm, Awesome. Thank you so much for all that. And that is, I love how specific that is for people who are um, in, in these really dicey scenarios where they're needing that kind of help. And I love that you, that you have provided that for them. And again, everyone, those buttons are below. So you can go check both of those out. Do you have any last insights, anything else you want to leave people with? Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I tell people all the time is that people will think that what you tell them to think and you and you alone define your value. 80% of a negotiation is won before you walk into a room. It really starts from the inside out. So, you know, feel your power. You have it. You do. And it, uh, so many people have actually beat narcissists and you can too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate you and for doing this again with us, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you, Avaya students watching or listening right now for showing up with your, for yourself today and, and recognizing that, that inner power. And we will see you all again very soon. Take care. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this latest class with Rebecca Zung. She talked with us today about how to slay any negotiation with narcissists. So whether you are in a scenario where you're actually in negotiation with a narcissist via a legal system or court system or something, or just in your everyday life um, in a relationship like this or with family or what have you, I think these were really important tools and strategies that you can take away with you. And I think just my, my favorite part is really coming back to your own personal power and just recognizing, truly recognizing that, right. You, you do hold all that power, right. And, uh, you know, no matter what happens outside of you, right. It's an inner game and you can bring that inner game into any situation that you're in. And, you know, that is definitely going to make your journey easier, right. To recognize your own personal power. And I thought that was really empowering way to end things today with, with Rebecca. And I hope that you enjoyed this and got a lot out of it. And we will talk to you all again real soon. Take care. Avaya has changed my life. Avaya has made me the woman I am today. Avaya is my home. Avaya is personal freedom. Avaya is the reason my life continuously improves. Let everyone in your life know about Avaya. Everyone needs to know about this amazing company. Thank you, Avaya, for appearing in my inbox. What Ike Allen and Andy Anderson have created at Avaya is what the world needs. 